So I'm shooting a couple videos today talking about guitar strings on the acoustic guitar, doing some comparisons, and uh, I thought I'd do a quick video where I show you the way I've been restringing my guitars for the last five or six years or so. It's for sure the best way. There might be other ways of doing it, but this has never failed me. It keeps the strings tight and it keeps them from not slipping, so you're going to want to watch this. Even if you are already a great guitarist, I've met many great guitarists who I've seen their guitar or they've asked me to change a string and it's it's a mess. Like I put the new string on and I start tightening up the rest of them. And the string starts slipping or for God knows what reason they have the strings wound around the, the wrong way. Uh, my goal in making today's video is just to show you a foolproof way of restringing your guitar. So hopefully uh, if you're looking this up on, on the internet and you find it, hopefully this is going to be a very easy video for you to watch and learn from. So all you're going to need for this video is just something to clip the end of the strings off when we're done. Uh, this also comes with a string winder on it. You can find these at guitar shops. They're pretty cheap. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a pencil. I recommend a lead pencil. I'll tell you why in a second. And of course your pack of strings. Alright, so I'm going to try and keep this as concise as possible. Um, there's plenty of videos online already about changing guitar strings, but I'm just hoping that this one is as simple as possible and as quick as possible. So you're not wasting your whole day trying to figure this out. Uh, the first thing you gotta do is untune your guitar strings. Do them a little bit at a time because if you start with the thickest string and move to the thinnest, you won't have untightened the thinnest one and you're relieving all this pressure on the neck which is actually gonna stretch the thinnest string more than you'd like and uh, it might break on you. So start with the thickest string and just do about a turn or two. Do that to all six strings and then you can start really undoing everything. I'm going to fast forward through this next part. And you know what I'm seeing when, as I'm undoing this is the, uh, the manufacturer of this guitar. Actually, these are the original strings on this guitar. They didn't string it up very well. These strings could have slipped at any moment. So the way I'm going to show you is foolproof. It's the best way to do it for sure. Alright, so you'll want to get them pretty loose. Uh, to the point where you can pull them away from the guitar a little bit. And then the easiest thing to do is if you have your wire cutters, your string cutters, just cut them off. It makes it easier pulling them out of the guitar. So we'll start over here at the saddle. Hope you can see this. And you're going to need to get inside the guitar to do this. So actually, and I can't show you this because the camera won't fit in the guitar, but you'll go in and you'll push up on the bottom of the pin here and that'll get the string up and away. At the end of it's gonna be bent a little bit, so keep your hand in there and help it feed through. And uh, watch your eyes as you take it out. And I like to set down my pegs in an area where I know which peg goes where, because as you pull them out, you're gonna see different size indents. So this peg was for the E string, the skinniest string here on the bottom, and uh, I'm gonna throw that on my desk over here on the left side and I'll line them up just so I know which ones go where. I'm going to repeat that process for all six strings. Alright, we'll move on over to the top of the guitar now, the headstock. Take those string ends out. While you're at it and you've got the guitar strings off, take a second and take the dust off the guitar. In this next part, take a second and line up the string tuners so that the hole in them is facing in this direction, flush with where the string is going to come through. So you won't have to go around and come in at an angle. Uh, you'll actually want to line it up directly with the hole in the nut right here. So get all the holes lined up down the headstock facing towards the neck. And at any point, if you have any questions, leave me a comment in the video. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alright, this next part is where I start involving the pencil. I recommend using a lead pencil, um, and that's because we're going to be breaking off the graphite to throw that in the nut here, in the six spaces where the strings go. I'm having a hard time getting my camera to focus. Uh, but what you're going to do is, for the small ones, just kind of draw in there. And I do this because graphite is a natural lubricant, and it keeps the strings moving, moving through there uh, smoothly. As you get to the bigger ones, you can actually you can color in there and then actually break off the graphite tip in there and leave that in there if you can. 
so that when you shove the next set of strings through it crushes the graphite in. This is really important on the wound strings because it'll keep everything lubricated and on the strings that are wound, the E, A, D, and G, sometimes as you tune them the ridges can actually get stuck in the nut. The graphite just acts as a lubricant in there and it keeps everything moving smoothly. I'm using the Dario 13 gauge phosphor bronze strings. This is just what I like to use. Um, stay tuned for a demo I'm doing between 13 gauge and 10 string, sorry, and 10 gauge strings. I'm just going to do a shootout because a lot of people say that heavier strings uh, give you better tone. And especially on acoustic guitar, I think that is the case. So I'm going to be doing a shootout where we we see, you know, how much difference there actually is in the tone between, you know, a set of 13 gauge strings and a set of 10 gauge strings. Okay. As you go through and unwind the strings, be careful they don't hit you in the eye either. Um, as you look at your strings, they should have different colors on them. I've just got two here. Look at the pack of strings that you get to try and identify, you know, what's what. Um, this is how they're going to mark which strings go where. So I'm going to start with the E string, the lowest string, the thickest one. And the best way to do this is to start with the string here. We're going to feed the ball end in. And before we start stringing it up, we're going to put all six strings in. So feed that in. And on the inside of the guitar, you're going to feel the ball end go through. And as you stick the, uh, the pin back in, there's like a little notch here. And this, the ball end should end up about right there near the top of of the peg and you'll bend it in so as you push it in uh, you'll push the string in and then you'll shove the peg on top of it and you'll pull the string through keep going past the end of the peg up until it's as close to the ball end as possible you'll need your hand inside to do this and actually while you're at it why not take the graphite and uh, create some lubrication here for the saddle as well. This is the white piece. I mean, usually made of plastic or bone that the guitar string goes over at the bridge. And then I just brush it off. Uh, so take your first string and I throw it on this side of the neck just to keep it lined up there. Then we take the next string and we repeat the process. All right, start with the ball end again and feed it inside. Feed it in there with the notch facing the saddle. This is the notch is the open, the open part of it. When you've got that one through and the ball end is seated inside, make sure you push the, the peg down in there as hard as you can. Hold on to the ball end so that it stays there. And keep repeating the process for the rest of the strings. I'm going to fast forward here again. Alright, so once you've got all six done here, go ahead and I throw the strings to the other side of the neck. Start with the thickest one and we're going to start feeding it through the headstock. And this is the part that I think is really important that you get right, no pressure. Uh, but this is also where a lot of people mess up. So, take the string, feed it through the hole, going in the direction from the neck to the tip of the headstock. Feed it through the hole there. Make sure the string is straight, by the way, that it's not twisting, um, and feed it through. On the third fret, take your hand, put all four fingers together, and then you're going to turn it so that we've got a little bit of area lifted between the string and the fretboard here. Pull it tight against that so that's all the room you have. All right, and that's about how much slack you're going to want to have. So take this end this end by the headstock, bend it hard against the tuner towards the middle of the, of the headstock. Not towards the outside, but towards the middle. Alright, we're going to feed it underneath. So take the string and it's going to go underneath this part of the string that you're holding here. Up and around and bend it hard again, pointing it back towards the middle of the headstock. Okay? 
and now as you start turning we're going to end up with about one or two turns on the tuner post and that's ideal here keep turning it make sure you maintain tension here so that everything stays straight all right and again you want to make sure you're turning it uh, if your pig is on the left side of the guitar make sure that it's turning counterclockwise all right so hold tension on that as you turn it up to pitch you can pull this through a little bit to make sure it stays tight in the tuner and as the string is making its rotations around make sure that your string is being fed underneath the winding hold tension on that the whole way and then finally you'll end up with one or two windings here don't pull it up to pitch yet just leave it there and uh, so you don't poke yourself in the eye I just like to take the loose string end here and just wrap it around itself and make a little loop alright we're gonna repeat this process for the next couple strings so take your A string next the next thickest one I'm gonna repeat the process on camera just so you're following along you can see it done a couple different ways feed it through straight through again make sure there's no twists in the string put all four fingers together make about that much distance between the fretboard and the string and then pull it tight so that's all the slack you're getting pull that tight then we're taking this end again I'll get a little bit closer this time and on the tip of the headstock side of the string bend it hard against the tuner so you're making that bend that kink in the string that's going to hold it there place the string underneath the slack that you're holding the end of it goes underneath over pull hard and then push back over and fold it again towards the middle of the headstock so it's kinked and it's staying there maintain tension on this part and we're going to wind it again keep it tight there as it goes around the first time and the reason I fold it under and I go back like that is because then the string is actually holding itself in place and as you get tighter here it's never going to slip out of the hole All right. so keep spinning it until it's almost up to pitch by the way at this end where your saddles are as you're tightening it you're going to want to keep pressure on the, the buttons from time to time if you can you can hear they slipped a little bit they started to pull out as I was putting the string in so just keep pressure on top there so that they don't fly out and again make that loop so that you don't poke anyone in the eye repeat the process with the next string I'll fast forward through this one uh, before we get to the other side of the headstock By the way, if you have your string winder here, uh, this is where you can use this to help speed things along. On this next side of the neck, uh, where we start with the G, B, and E strings, the thinner strings, this is where you're going to do the opposite. So still feed it through straight from the neck towards the headstock there. Always make sure you don't have any kinks in the string being fed through do that so you can tell it's and there's no twisting in it instead of folding to the right we're gonna fold to the left so you still go towards the middle of the headstock that's an easy way to remember always go towards the middle of the headstock and in fact if you have a six on one side headstock like this strat over here uh, that goes the same you know just keep all of them since they're on the same side keep them the same as the first three pegs that we did all right so feed it through I'll show you this again from this angle now in case it's confusing. Pull it towards the middle of the headstock, kink it hard, fold it underneath, kink it, and then pull it back towards the middle of the headstock again. Kink it one more time. Keep tension on this side as you wind it up now, and you're going to wind it clockwise now instead of counterclockwise. So everything is going this way. Pay attention to the top of the tuner so you can see which way this is going.
Alright, and again, one last time, once you got all six strings on, look at the pegs over here and make sure none of them are popping up from the tension that's being pulled against them. So press down on all of them, make sure they're flush as, as flush as possible with the bridge. Alright, and then we're going to start tuning it up. I'm going to grab my tuner. I just have a clip-on tuner since this guitar doesn't have a pickup in it, um, but any, any sort of tuner is going to work. So uh, as you're retuning, start with your lowest string, the thickest one. So I'm going to start with the E here. And you're going to hear it adjust a little bit. As you're tuning up, make sure you're keeping pressure on that bridge pin again, because it's going to want to pull the more tension you put on it. Tune the E up to pitch or a little bit further than you need to, because it's going to stretch by the time you get back around to it. And then we're going to go back around, look, the E string is already flat, it's back to D sharp and a half already, so tune that one up again. We're going to touch each of the six strings, bring them back up to pitch. A is already a half step down, and D is a half step down as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is stretching the strings. Some people like to do this, some people don't. I just think it's, uh, it's better for tuning stability in the long run. So take the guitar string here, start with the thickest one, and put your finger underneath it, a couple fingers, and just pull up as you move along the neck, the full length there and back. And you'll hear that it went almost a full step down already, just from pulling on it. That makes sure that there's no more loose areas in the tuner or in the bridge pins and that once you get it back up to pitch now, it's going to stay there for the most part. It might adjust over the next week or so, but you're not going to have any major slippage in the tuner or the bridge and this will keep things consistent for you or whoever you're restringing this guitar for. Yep, so tune the strings back up one more time now. If it goes over a little bit, that's alright, because it'll come back down as you put more tension on the neck. Alright, so that'll get your guitar fully restrung and in tune. The last part, especially if you have kids, uh, if you're restringing this for your child or if you have pets, cats that like to swat at stuff, uh, make sure that you clip the string ends off so it doesn't get in their eye or anything. Um, so on some of these string winders, these are the string cutters I used to cut the strings at the beginning of the video. It's also what I used to wind the tuner. Um, if you go to any guitar store, they should have something like this. These clippers are also good for clipping the strings off here. So I like to take the string, pull it over a little bit, and then I'll cut the string. I'm not going to cut it just because it makes it easier to take these off as I'm doing these string comparisons. But obviously cut it as close as you can to the tuner. You're going to have a little bit of a stub, all right? And then use the plastic from the string winder to bend that in so that if you're running, you know, your hand by it or your sleeve, you don't cut yourself or you don't snag your sweater on it or whatever. So cut it as close to the tuner as possible and then use the plastic so you don't hurt your fingers to fold it back in as close as you can. And uh, anyway, here's a close-up of what your finished string winding should look like. We have the string coming in, and it's fed through the underside here. It should be underneath all the windings, hopefully. It gets wound around uh, anywhere between one or two times. If you do it more than that, you're going to end up with a lot of slack in here that can affect tuning stability. Uh, so just it'll be fed around once or twice with how I've showed you and um, your string should be bent in this direction and folding the string underneath itself is just a way to keep tension on it so that your string never slips up here. So anyway, uh, I guess that did get a little bit long-winded but it was very thorough and if you're still watching I hope it's helped you. And you know what, one more thing uh, since I got you here that you're going to want to check especially if you're changing string gauges your action is going to change. So I just switched to 13's and you'll notice how high the strings are above the frets they should be looking about like that. 
So uh, this guitar, I want to say, had 11s on it uh, that it came from the factory with. I switched to 13s here. So the tighter the strings are, the thicker they are, the more tight they're going to need to be. And that also means that uh, the more tension is going to be on the neck. So it's actually, as you put the strings on, sorry, my camera's not focusing again. As you put the strings on, the strings are pulling in this direction, which is pulling the neck this way too, which in turn is raising the action, the height of the strings off the fretboard. So two things you can do to fix this yourself is uh, number one, look down the length of the guitar neck, and this is going to be tough to show on camera, but it should be mostly straight. So put your eye next to the nut here once you've clipped everything off, and just look down the end of it. Make sure that the neck is as straight as possible. If it's not, we've got up here what we call a truss rod cover, and you can find some more videos online about how to adjust that. That's a little bit more in-depth than just restringing. Sometimes your truss rod will be down here, uh, like this one is. And then uh, the other thing you can do is, once the neck's straight, if your action's still pretty high, you can pull the saddle off down here, actually. This is the saddle, this bone slash plastic part. You can pull this off and sand down the base of it so that it's a little bit lower and the strings are lower. The lower the strings are, the easier it's going to be to play. And uh, you don't want to have any buzzing, but it should be low enough that the strings are easy to push down. For a child, if you've got a kid learning the guitar, I recommend uh, 10 gauge strings. Those are the easiest. I think the guitar should be as easy as possible to play in the beginning so that the kid's more likely to stick with it. Um, and as you get a little bit older, you can step up to 11s, 12s, 13s. I know some people that play on 16s. Those are bluegrass players mostly. Well, I hope this video has helped you in some way or another. Um, if you're interested in checking out some other tips I have on picking the right acoustic guitar strings, the right gauge for yourself, make sure you check out a couple of videos I did uh, that I uploaded a couple weeks ago. I actually haven't filmed them yet. Uh, this is September right now, but as I get ready to go on the cruise ship, in the next week or so. I'm just filming a ton of videos that I'll be editing while I'm on board. So stay tuned for more videos and uh, anyway, like and subscribe if you're interested and I'll see you next time.